Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Monday, March 11th, 2019, and we are so excited to have in the studio with us Spud Cannon. Whenever you're ready, let's get into your first song.
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We are in the studio with Spud Cannon. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming out today. Thank you guys so much <laughs> for having us. <laughs> for having this us. has been so much fun. Amazing. That's what that's what we aim to do. Uh, so in reading kind of a little bit about you all, there is definitely some rebels in the room from <laughs> putting spuds on walls to tagging the quad. Were you always rule breakers? Is this a new thing as a band collective? You know, we know the rules and we sometimes follow them, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> as my favorite psych professor once said. Um, yeah, so I guess the most, most of that comes out of the way we kind of advertise our shows and who we are on campus. So our first year together, we uh, printed out a bunch of pictures of potatoes, small ones, like probably six to a piece of paper, um, and we just posted them all over campus. Um, but even but even one better, Meg's like a climber too, and there's a rock wall in the science building. It's not really a rock wall though. It's like it's, it's like kind of like wall. that. Yeah, it's yeah. like you made it a, a rock bigger. wall. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like actually just bricks that come out at different like they protrude at different levels. Yeah, they're kinda, just asking so for it. I just scaled them and like put a bunch on the top, and they stayed there for but, like six months. But then there was science professors that were hypothesizing how someone got it up there, oh, that, and they reasoned apparently that no one could have climbed up there. Yeah, someone um, had a really long stick. It was yeah. just like putting them out. Yeah, sure. yeah. But we also spray painted the school, which was another bad one. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't part of that one. In our defense, we did think it was chalk spray paint, and it was supposed to wash off, but it didn't. So it did not. We got on our hands and knees and scrubbed it, and it did yeah. not come off. Because there was there's the picture on Facebook of you guys with the stencil and everything, right? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we paid for that one, but it was worth it. Worth Everybody, it. yeah, we are yeah. known at our school. Yeah. But we wouldn't have done yeah. it if it hadn't said it would wash off. <laughs> so as a collective on the 1-800 Movers tour, have there been <laughs> any antics like this on tour, or has it just been confined to kind of in college, like, show promotion? You know, I think the safe thing about doing that seven college is they're not going to take you to jail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, so I think, I think the risk-taking is limited to shenanigans within ourselves. Within the van. Within the van, yeah. yeah. Is there is there one kind of ultimate prankster in the van, or is it equal amongst the group? We all have different things, it's, you know? It's who done it <laughs> okay. every day in the van, which makes it super exciting. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad you're here, and if you're ready, we're ready to hear more music from you.
You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with Spud Cannon. And let's talk about the new record. Came out in November, entitled Squeeze. And this was very much a different experience than the first time, right? The first record, you were in the basement. Now you're in New York. You're in L.A. Like, tell us about that experience, knocking it out in only four days. Like, crazy. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty insane. Our first album, we had, we actually did in seven days, and we vowed after that that we would never do something in such a short amount of time. And the joke was totally on us because to get out of the basement, basically, like the studio time we could get was like two days, and we did it at the end of a tour. And yeah, was I was crazy. like already dead because like after tour, I just want to like hibernate for a few days right, and never yeah. sing again <laughs> until the end of that. Um, but after tour, we're going right in. We're writing lyrics up until the minute we get into the studio. Sure, yeah. Um, but I mean, it's like it's this rush, and we always. We, I feel like we do work best under pressure, which is. Like yeah, there's got to be. It's got to be like <laughs> we got to get a song out in this like four hour, you know, time slot that we have. Yeah. But but it was great. It was. I mean, like we um like major shout out to Johnny Taylor at um, Beacon AV Lab in New York for for cutting it and helping mix this thing because without him. I think we would have all gone stir crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and w were there certain things that you recorded in New York and certain mm -hmm. things you recorded in LA? And kind of what was the rationale between picking and choosing where you did what? Necessity. <laughs> yeah, the ones we had down by the time, by the end of May, we recorded in New York. And then everything else, we were either like writing on tour or we wrote once tour ended and we were in LA the few days before we got into the studio. Nice. So, yeah, whatever we have, we recorded at the time. <laughs> yeah. And then this record has a cover on it. And last, your first uh, full length also had a cover on it. What was the discussion about which cover to choose, where to throw it in the kind of track listing of the record? Was there a lot of debate or was it kind of a no brainer? So, we did Funky Town actually just randomly for a show at Vassar because there was a Vassar band in the 80s that covered it and we were like, it'd be kind of fun if we did that too. Like oh, people nice. will dance. Like, we, yeah. like, we, like, we like to dance. We like when people dance. So. Yeah, Agit Pop was the name of the band, like obscure 80s Vassar punk band that my friend just like dug up the record and they do like kind of a sped up punk version of it. And then yeah, it's just like live. I, everyone was getting into it too much to like <laughs> not throw it on the record. And we recorded it only in two takes, like or whatever, oh, just wow. to like have. And then we were like, ah. Oh. Yeah, you know. It was too good not to put on there. Yeah, it's funky <laughs> town. Everyone wants to go. Yeah. <laughs> and I know you mentioned, you kind of alluded to it, but in another interview, it's kind of lyrics are the last thing that gets plugged in. And what's kind of, I know the kind of theme of last record with the kind of heartbreak and stuff, and then going into this is kind of more like in the now, in the moment for the lyrics and kind of blending everything together. What was the what made this approach different from the last record? I think we did a better job of kind of dividing the song so that we each, I mean, the girls in the band, we all write the lyrics. Okay. And, um, so we would divide it amongst ourselves just and have like different tastes of different writing styles and um, kind of divide the workload. Is <laughs> it is it interesting that it's like you're kind of singing if like if you're writing something and then like Meg is singing it or vice versa? Is there kind of that conversation of like, this is what I meant by this, or kind of explaining it so that the person singing it can really get that message across? Or is it kind of just like, whatever you want to do with these, go for it? And Meg writes pretty much all the vocal melodies. Okay. So, yeah, I don't that's know. somehow. But yeah, we've never had that conversation about like what it means, but we have had conversations trying to like work through the sounds. Because like it's always different when you see it written out than when you're like trying to make it yeah. like, sound in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, we've changed things based on that, but we always work together. And I think a lot of times, like inspiration for the lyric material kind of comes from the melody line and like what it sounds like, and we kind of just draw from that and write something around what Meg has written for like the vocal melody. Yeah, and sometimes we'll be like, okay guys, what's this song about? And I remember one time I asked that question, and Lucy was like. Solar pyromaniac. <laughs> and I, said, I just like wrote the lyrics around that. Nice. So. <laughs> Very cool. Well, definitely check out Squeeze, their sophomore LP, which is available now. And if you're ready, let's take it away with the last bunch of songs. <laughs>
once wrote a song about a monster. <laughs>
watching Audio Tree Live. We've been in the studio with Spud Cannon. Definitely check out their latest release entitled Squeeze and definitely check out their dates for their 1-800 Movers Tour. They'll be at Subterranean here in Chicago tonight and then various cities throughout the South and Southeast until the end of March. Spud Cannon, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming out this afternoon and showing us how you get down. Thank Dance you. moves were so, amazing. So, so <laughs> Thank you. Thank we you. had so much fun. Yeah. Really. Big thanks to all the people here in the studio, sound engineers, camera and lighting crew, and you, the viewers. Definitely connect with us or the band on social media for further information. And from all of us here at Audio Tree Live, thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. All right, so you guys want to do it for real now?